I titled today's mind map, A Journey to Revealing Your Infinite Potential. So I like these words here, infinite potential. And one of the ways that we actually discover this infinite potential is to really discover within ourselves what do we truly love and to live from those ideals. This morning, and synchronistically so, as I was listening to some jazz, more specifically Duke Ellington, I asked myself, you know, maybe I should go look up his biography. Maybe there's a biography on him. One of the things I like to do is watch documentaries, biographies of musicians, artists that I find to be very inspirational. You could really feel it as you enjoy their music, that they're saying something very deep. This is something that I've been discussing with many artists, the artistic expression or the innovation in relation to, let's say, last Thursday's video in which we discussed Tesla's process for working with imagination. We realize that there really are these inherent attributes within ourselves. We can discover them and we can live by them. I found that his last words actually articulated the point to the T, in which he said, Music is how I live, why I live, and how I will be remembered. Now, these are the statements of someone who really walked down that pathway of realizing their infinite potential and expressed it. And I believe that we all have the ability to do this, and it starts with the word decision. Now, Napoleon Hill, in his book, Think and Grow Rich, said it really well. He said, accurate analysis of over 25,000 men and women who had experienced failure disclosed the fact that lack of decision was near the head of the list of the 30 major causes of failure. Now, one of the things that we've been discovering is that failure is actually a stepping stone. It's the step in the right direction. What direction? Revealing our infinite potential. And when we decide that, okay, we're going to live like this and say, oh, I'm going to go down the journey to understanding myself. And when I have a vision, I'm going to commit to it. I'm going to see it into completion. How we relate to the word failure is going to help us tremendously in how we progress in life. And if we look a little deeper into the statement here, when he says, had experienced failure disclosed the fact that lack of decision was near the head of the list, which would imply to me, upon reflection of the statement, that one can't really fail when they decide and commit to something. As we've been discussing in our Neville Goddard conversations, assume it as done. Assume it as from this day onwards or the moment that decision is made, that is what you're going to commit to and live by it. Now, here's the beautiful thing. I believe we'll always truly commit to, I mean really commit to, what we love. And really any kind of interpretation that we have, perspectives, ideas, in regards to ourselves, in regards to our vision, that what we desire, what we commit to, which creates unnecessary friction within ourselves, stress, frustration within ourselves. Rather than enjoying the journey to the destination is really something that we can understand. What are we suggesting to ourselves in regards to the journey and the destination, the vision? Now, this is also related to the conversation. In Tuesday's video, I was going to lay a foundation for suggestion and auto-suggestion in our upcoming discussions. The decision brings us to the destination and it allows us to continue down the path to revealing what we are further suggesting to ourselves. What are we suggesting to ourselves? Now, also in Tuesday's video, and if you haven't watched it, I recommend watching it, I brought up what William Walker Atkinson discusses, 
the five classes of suggestion. Suggestion of authority, association, habit, repetition, and imitation. Out of all of these ideas, we, within ourselves, we have the ability to really understand what it is that we are suggesting to ourselves in relation to these areas. Let's uh, recap this. Suggestion by authority manifests both in the positive authoritative statements directed to the point and also by the spoken or written statements made by those who speak or write with an air of authority. Suggestion. It's very easy for us to associate certain things with certain other things as we will find that when one of the things is recalled, it will bring about its associated impressions. Now, reflect upon that. I really wanted to discuss this idea of infinite potential and also further discuss Tuesday's video. But something inside of me told me to put on some jazz music this morning. And then something also inspired me to go in and just do a little research. Maybe I could learn more about him. And this quote was so fitted for our discussion. Music is how I live, why I live, and how I will be remembered. It's symbolism for somebody that is really living how they truly desire to live. And really an embodiment of what we've been discussing, which is looking at the five sensory world and seeing it from the perspective of how they really are. From his perspective, it's music. It's how he lives. It's how he expresses. It's why he lives. And he will be remembered for his music, but I will also add another element to that. He will be remembered for helping us find it within ourselves. Our own inspiration, our own version of this. The suggestion of habit. Habit may arise from an original cause, suggestion of authority, association, repetition, imitation, or else from an original decision of the intellect resulting from reasoning. You got repetition, suggestion which passes you without much attention or consideration. When first made, will gain both attention and consideration from you, if it be repeated sufficiently often and in the right manner. And then imitation. In the acceptance of suggestions of authority, there is to be found an unconscious imitation on the mental attitude of the person asserting the authority. So, Every day we have really an option with the day-to-day journey. Say, is what we are interpreting from the five sensory experience really true and harmonious to our vision? I mean, really. And if for some reason we seem to have any confusion in living this way, consider that the experiences are actually revelation of what we are Unconsciously saying, I am too, identifying with. And so now James Allen, in his book, As a Man Think It, says it really well. He says, in the light of this truth, what then is the meaning of fighting against circumstances? It means that man is continually revolting against an effect without, while all the time he is nourishing and preserving its cause in his heart. That cause may take the form of a conscious vice or an unconscious weakness. But whatever it is, it stubbornly retards the efforts of its possessor and thus calls aloud for remedy. So this really is about valuing the journey and the destination. We really want to get to our destination. We want to get to that level of success or whatever it is that we desire. I would also suggest valuing the journey, seeing it perhaps like Duke Ellington would see it. This is how he lives, why he lives, to really enjoy that creative expression, that self-image that you are embodying, whatever it may be, the artistic expression, your innovation, the entrepreneurial journey. Accept yourself for who you really are. And any kind of lack of self-acceptance, lack of self-confidence, lack of whatever, 
is revealed in the journey in our experiences, in the circumstances in our life. See, we want to put out the creative expression, the innovation, and we want to also do it from a place of flow. At least that's what I suggest. Because then a person really doesn't feel that they're just waiting for the end to show up and they're not really valuing each moment, deep presence, the experience. By the way, another movie to watch, which I'm going to refer to, it just popped into my mind right now, is uh, Jiro Dreams of Sushi. Now that movie was great because it demonstrated exactly what we're talking about here. A person that really lives his creative expression looks like outside of what he was doing, he pretty much had his life to a certain process so that when he showed up to express creatively, he was deeply present and engaged with what he was doing. Now you'll see it. I recommend watching it. I'll put a link actually to the trailer. He was deeply engaged in what he was doing. This is how you know you really found what you love. Now, I would suggest finding what it is that you love, committing to what it is that you love. And this brings us into the next point here, which we're going to borrow from Napoleon Hill's Outwitting the Devil. He says, I can best define the word drift by saying that people who think for themselves never drift, while those who do little or no thinking for themselves are drifters. So you want to think for ourselves, and we want to think from the perspective of our goals, our vision, what we truly desire, who we truly are. That will allow us to see beyond any kind of information suggestion and what we are unconsciously saying I am too because we will be able to see the contrast. Because we can get to the destination from a place of flow, from a place of Wu Wei, or we can get there from a place of stress, frustration, overwhelm. That is a preference in the matter. We have that preference. Although a person might not believe that they have that preference. That's because they're unconscious to the idea that they have that preference. And perhaps they're unconscious to what is the causative factors of the different experiences and circumstances in their life that they interpret as holding them back from achieving what they truly want, which is who they really want to be, which is what they want to express. Or they can believe that the journey to the destination has to be stressful. That's a personal preference. Although, as mentioned, it could be an unconscious preference. Here are three great questions to ask ourselves so that we can do a couple things. Number one, really commit to that unknown world that we go into when we decide to move in that direction and find more peace traveling in that unknown world over to the destination, knowing that what is unknown will be known about ourselves and we can make peace with those attributes by actually looking at the unknown that shows up and asking ourselves these questions so we can understand. Number one, what are my experiences revealing in regards to what is going on within myself? Maybe as a person is building their business, they experience rejection. Now, Failure, rejection, these ideas, associations to, we go back here, the suggestion of association, that might not be necessarily true to how it actually is for us. We have maybe learned these suggestions elsewhere. And we have formed associations to the word failure when we recognize that for perhaps a period of time we were encouraging that through the suggestion of repetition repeatedly suggesting it to ourselves anytime that we step into a potentiality where we could experience failure and, and thus emphasizing what that interpretation is, such as, I am not good enough. People don't accept me. If I fail, then I will be shamed. And these are interpretations. See, when we ask these kinds of questions, we're able to bring awareness, shine the light on certain thinking patterns. Number two, do these experiences reveal certain insecurities regarding what I want in life? 
when you commit to something that you truly love, it's going to be easier to go down the journey to reveal these attributes within ourselves so that we can make peace with them. I can confidently say that because I've had conversations with thousands of people in regards to entrepreneurship, creative expression, artists, and so forth. And I found this commonality, which is that once a person makes peace with these attributes within themselves, they express the great work. Express it. It's easier for them to express. Their body language changes. Their voice tonality changes. Whatever their instrument of expression is becomes more refined, or we could say they became refined and expressed it through the instrument, whatever it is. Violin, turntables, freestyle rap, painting, sculpting, whatever form of creative expression, that's what ends up happening. What we find is that a person gets what they want and they keep what they want and they continue to build on what they get. So a person gets a certain level of entrepreneurial success and then they're ready to go down the journey again for the next innovation, for the next level of entrepreneurial success. Maybe if they're an athlete, they have their first taste of breaking past a plateau and then they want to go after breaking past the next plateau, realizing further the infinite potential. And they seem to get up. If they fail or get rejected, they get up and they go again. Why is it? Because they're making peace with certain thinking patterns within. And when they make peace with these thinking patterns within, they're allowing themselves to express. We call this deep stage of flow autotelic, being one with, where we feel such a deep integration with whatever it is that we're doing. We allow ourselves to express. We can say this from a very spiritual perspective. We allow ourselves to be the conduit of divine expression or the divine conduit which when we relate over to the discussion that we had also regarding some of the work from William Walker Atkinson and James Allen, I'll put a link in the description of that video, the allowing to express is the divine will. Thus, when we ask the question, do these experiences reveal certain insecurities regarding what I want in life? Then we don't shame ourselves. Perhaps you were identifying with certain thinking patterns in which we felt insecure that when we have something, we're going to lose it. Because that's what it really means when we say insecure, that get something unconsciously that thinks you're going to lose it. And if we have that kind of thinking pattern, we can write down the accurate thinking, the true thinking patterns, write them down, such as what I want wants me back from what I truly love. It is meant for me and thus it'll be maintained in my life. Although it wasn't like that in the past, who I am now is secure. Who I am now is complete. Who I am now is the person that thinks for themselves. I can look at any suggestion and find the true and accurate meaning within myself. Thus, make peace, identify with that thinking, and express accordingly. Number three, recognizing that my perspective on realities where peace is found what is a more loving and integrated way of looking at this? A person has experience in regards to failure. Because remember, we're going back here. When he said accurate analysis of over 25,000 men and women who had experienced failure disclosed the fact that lack of decision was near the head of the list of the 30 major causes of failure. Now, what we're talking about in regards to failure here is in reference to a person giving up on realizing their infinite potential. That's what we're talking about. However, when we commit to something that we truly love, if we experience failure, we're still going to move forward, especially if it's encouraged. So I would like to encourage that in you. You have committed to what you truly love. And now you're valuing the journey as much as the destination. I used to think one was better than the other. I don't get involved with those kinds of thinking patterns now. One is better than the other. And in this regard, we value the journey and the destination. We see it as one. The journey is revealing as to the different thinking within ourselves that expresses itself as the circumstances and experiences in our life. Unnecessary interpretation in regards to failure 
there's no problem, really, unless we want to make it a problem when it comes to failure and rejection, when it comes to cultivating our skill, creative expression, and so forth. Because when a person makes peace with that kind of thinking, what they'll find is we recognize that they're able to think for themselves. They'll be able to look at the experience, the circumstance, and say, here's what can be done about it. Here's what my thinking pattern is, and here's the true and accurate thinking. And they'll find the true and accurate thinking, identify with it, and then they will apply it accordingly. We see this in the entrepreneurial journey. I mentioned this a few videos ago. And I said, in management consulting, essentially what I do is I just ask the question when a person has an experience that they would call failure or rejection. I say, well, can this be optimized or done a little differently? Can this be delegated? Can this be automated? Can this be eliminated in part or in whole or in combination? And right away, it resets them into a state of mind of acceptance, full acceptance. They say, okay, well, looks like I can do something about this. It is possible. And they find what that thing is. And they move forward and they produce the result, thus revealing a higher degree of infinite potential. So now let's bring this conversation into an epilogue in relation to these different attributes that we discuss and further encourage it with an auto-suggestion. We recognize that the idea of failure or rejection is something that we have the power to decide the meaning on. And while we may have had suggestions from wherever, we have the power to go within ourselves and find the true and accurate suggestion and identify with it. Say, I am to that true suggestion. And you'll know when it's the true and accurate suggestion, when the transmutation of energy occurs from reactivity over to proactivity or heavy tension, frustration over to calm and peace and perhaps excitement in the direction to your vision and to stimulate what the thinking patterns are. May they be Perhaps they are unknown right now. These questions. What are my experiences revealing in regards to what is going on within myself? Thus, we value the journey and the experiences and the circumstances on the journey to reveal what's within ourselves so we can make peace with these attributes. Do these experiences reveal certain insecurities regarding what I want in life, knowing that when we are complete within, we are thinking, when we make peace within, we don't lose we keep those thinking patterns reveal as being complete externally, complete internally, complete externally. And number three, recognizing that my perspective on reality is where peace is found. What is a more loving and integrated way of looking at this, whatever the experience may be? And what we're really doing is here, emphasizing Thinking for ourselves, thinking accurately, truly, in harmony with our vision. So we can find within ourselves the way we really want to live, allow ourselves to express it. So we can have our own version as to what Duke Ellington suggested in his last words. Music is how I live, why I live, and how I will be remembered. Let's go ahead and conclude this with an auto-suggestion to encourage. You can say, I reveal the ability to understand myself through the day-to-day -day experiences of circumstances and information that presents itself. Upon reflection, I'm able to understand the causative factors within to bring forth a higher degree of peace as I value the journey and the destination and see them as one in the eternal now. I realize that what I want wants me back, and as I receive, I keep, because I am complete within. I realize then a loving and integrated way of looking at reality, myself, and how I relate to people, environment, circumstance, and information brings forth a higher degree of inner peace as I think for myself and suggest to myself the accurate thinking that allows me to find flow 
on the journey to realizing my vision. I realized that failure and rejection are aspects that move me forward to optimization data to integrate and realize my vision. If you would like a copy of this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.